Welcome back. Another interview for you today. This time, a super special guest goes by the name of... Do I pronounce it Aku? Aku, yeah? Hey, it's Aku. Everyone pronounces Aku. it Aku. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's an absolutely amazing creator. Makes pretty pretty funny content. Um, I'll let him introduce himself in a second, but yeah, just so you know, before anything is said, he is a very, very, very smart man. So I'll let you introduce yourself, man. Yo, my name is Aku, and I make awesome content. Awesome. And, and um, you know, really funny content. You guys are going to love it. And right now, you know, I'm going to be honest, uh, Frank. Yeah. Yeah, this interview in three to five months is probably going to be one of your biggest interviews, views-wise. Damn. A thousand percent. Bro, that's, yeah. see, that's why I like you. See, I don't know, like, from an outsider's perspective, I don't know if you're using like manifestation, like trying to affirm it, or you actually like know for a fact, or maybe it's part a bit of both. Um, but I love that, it, like that confidence, that energy, that knowing that you're going to be where you want to be. So props to you, man. I believe it. Thank you. But uh, manifestation plays a part in everyday life for me, but it's more of the actions that I took to know I'm like, I know exactly what's going to happen in time in two months time and then for this interview for say you know my name five months of time the seo charts on google trends is going to be crazy high mm. um i'm gonna have a huge spike in the next three months on that so you know everyone's gonna be searching me and people will be curious about my you know before i blew up so quick yeah. you know so this might be definitely one of those interviews where people are going to be curious to Definitely want to watch the whole thing. So, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, man. I guess my first question for you is, how did you start your YouTube journey? Did it start with videos? Did it start with something else? Let us know. All right. So, my YouTube. Also, how much time do we have? Man, I got all day, so I can we can stay for however oh, okay. long you need, man. What time is it for you? Where, where you at? I'm in Australia, so it's right now. It is eleven thirty six a.m. Oh damn. Yeah. All right. All right. So, my YouTube journey. I started my YouTube channel two months ago. Uh, no, my bad, four months ago. But um, two months ago is when I started to actually post again because four months ago, I started my journey. And that was when I was in LA. I was in LA staying at a friend's house and I wanted to make videos on my like my own brand and everything. And I wanted to make spread some like a, pos- a positive image for myself. Yeah. And- so I decided, why not make a YouTube? Because I've always been like, I always loved YouTube. It's always been like my dream. So I made two videos in that two months, in those two months, right? And a lot of stuff happened, family stuff happened. I moved back here and, you know, yada, yada. Two months later, I hopped back on YouTube and started started making videos. And I think... I think that's when I decided to do everyday vlogs. I've been very consistent, but the times you'll see, if you do look at my videos and you see the time gaps, if you see that I missed a day or three days or four days or even a week, mm. those times specifically, like those times were times of gathering information, you know? So the more time I missed for posting a video, the more information and um, analyzation I use to make the create to um, make my plan more um, the chances of success higher and not just the chances of success but also like execution wise where the predictions more accurate than you know than what they were before and I can say this as a YouTuber I researched a lot I'm not big right now, you know. I just hit 25,000 subscribers, which is amazing to me. I'm so grateful. It's amazing. And, you know, it's crazy to me. So crazy to me because I'm like, I know exactly. Like, like I, my worth right now to myself is the same as what it would be in the next six months. You know, my numbers will be up, but I know my worth now to where someone would hit me up and be like, yo, I got this deal i want to make with you yada yada i would not take it if it was you know something dumb mm. you know because i know how it works you know it's like a farm plus i do these everyday blogs so um my 
my strategy right like with youtube right now is don't if you're watching this and you want to become a youtuber and you're starting off simple don't be a perfectionist all right that is the opposite of what you want to do and don't try to be like every other youtuber in a sense of don't try to make an image for yourself look so high quality and professional all these big youtubers like mr beast and all of them they started off with you know what they knew they didn't try to they didn't take a whole month to make one video or a whole week to make one video you know use your time wisely every day is another day that you can get lucky you know because that's what it is it's luck you get you reach the right audience at the right time that's why every day it counts because if you reach that audience at the exact right time then boom i'm getting so off topic bro, I don't bro, know, wait, bro riff with it riff with it now what was the question my I question was how did you start but yeah I, I agree with the thing that you said where it's where it's luck but at the end of the day what is luck other than anticipate or uh, preparation and a bit of opportunity mm-hmm. See, with luck is, I see it as this. No matter what, how you start your career, your, your career or whatever, luck plays a 25% factor in it. Depending on how much work you put in, mm. it pay, it, you know, that's the high percentage it plays and the lower percentage it plays. Um, for, me, for me, luck is in the sense of if you make content, right, you know, you have zero subscribers, you have zero, you know, you have zero anything. Do you expect yourself to all right, your chances of luck are way higher like your chances of getting a video to go big are way higher if you're consistently posting every day than if you're posting once a week and that is because as the algor- algorithm works right any algorithm on social media does this they they're looking for an audience that wants to you know be a part of what you have mm-hmm. so uh, the, the algorithm searching to see what audience is going to be good for this channel and then if you're posting once a week, you're giving an algorithm once, you know, every week for a new video to target the audience. Because every con- content is recyclable, no matter what. You know, two weeks, I like, I have a video right now. And two weeks later, I change the thumbnail it can, and the title, you know, make it more of a, you know, more intriguing. It could go, you know, the next two weeks, it could blow up or whatever. You know, the content is recyclable in an algorithm. So you taking your chance to, Wait, a whole week. By the way, there's only 55 weeks in a year around that. So you're posting 55 videos in a year, which is ass. It's so bad. Oh, yeah. Can I curse? I don't, yeah, I don't bro, curse. bro. Say anything you want, man. It's fine. All right. It, it's so bad. It's, it's pathetic. It honestly, it makes my blood boil because it's like 55 videos. I just posted 35 videos in the last, like, 35 days. <laughs> so it's like, it's like you're doing that. You just, you see how much time and life force energy you just wasted, mm. you know, being lazy because it's all an excuse. I, I seen Jideon, right? Mm. He was on a podcast with Logan Paul. Okay. Jideon said, Jideon said he can't, he, po- he posts once a week because it's too much. It's like exhausting in a way or whatever. He can't, he don't know if he'll be able to do two. And then Logan Paul said, all right, just do two. And Jideon looked at his team. He was like, I don't know. I don't know. Yada, yada. And then at that point, I was like, wow, Gideon, he definitely had, high, he got lucky. Like, he, he's scared, like he's talented. Everyone has talent. Everyone has an entertainment factor to themselves. You know, there's, there's artists who are way better than these guys, like Little Baby and stuff, mm. but they didn't get lucky, you know. But Gideon, the reason he got lucky is because there's a lot of other YouTubers like him, right? Like, they're doing his type of content. Yep. But why did he blow up? Why did he blow up? You know, all these YouTubers post once a week. He posts once a week. It's because he got that lucky break. You know, that lucky. You know, that one person seen this video, started posting TikToks on it. Okay, some people. That one person, that one big YouTuber reacted to his video. Started. You know, he got lucky. It's all about luck. Cause at, if you're doing once a week, and your content's very like, it's not even fast paced. His content's really slow and everything. You know, it's just shows like yeah, he's getting lucky at that point because he just had a lucky. He had a lucky break. But now he's taking that break and he can turn into something bigger. Mm. That's why I see he's that lucky break, he can turn into something bigger. Mm. But I don't think Gideon blowing up was that's why he always praises the the Almighty High because you know he's praising the God or whatever because it was luck. He got lucky. You know, that that whole situation of him blowing up and everything. He's been working hard though, but he hasn't been working hard enough. Posting once a week. I I think any YouTuber that posts once a week procrastinates and doesn't have the hard work to um like doesn't really have that hard working mentality Mm. because once a week is like 
what are you, you know, you making at least, you're probably filming, what, four days of that week, taking that clip, I mean, taking that footage. Because then, bro, I re- my videos, like, I just made a 15-minute video, and I recorded it in one day. It was it was one of my most, right now, it's one of my most viewed videos, like, doing good. It's at 13K in two days. And it's like, you know, like, I have a video of 27,000 views, but this one, that was in, like, that was in, like, two weeks. This one is 13,000, and it's only been two days. I recorded it in one day. One day. And it's one of my best performing videos. 15 minutes long. And it took me four hours. So if you're taking four days for one video, what are you doing? One, what are you doing in that video? Two, what are you doing the next, the other three days? Or what are you doing just your whole time exactly? You know? And three, what's in three? Um, what the fuck are you, what the fuck are you doing? Like, just what are you doing? <laughs> At that point, it's, it's just, Bro, it's it's really annoying to me when I see creators that have so much talent and potential, or that even have a lot of like followers, a huge fan base, and they still want to do once a week, and all because of perfectionists. Perfectionists. No, I bust out a video. It takes me like six to seven hours to edit one video, right? So I I have my time good. You know, I get around five to six hours of sleep. Normal. It's good. So if I'm busting out these videos. Every day, I get, I'm taking like four hours to film, six hours to edit, um, and then the next time I got left free time, making ideas like ideation strategies, like all this is just all ideation strategies. Um, my um, next step, you know, next planning, I post around twelve clips a day on TikTok. I edit, create, create them all myself. But I'm a one man team. Well, I do have a team. Like I have my own cameraman who helps me. He grinds too with me, like he helps me record. But I'm my own one, like one man team, and I'm like doing this stuff. Gideon, he doesn't even edit. He has his own editor. He pays an editor. <laughs> what the freak are you doing, Gideon? Literally, bro, like your potential is way bigger. And I, I already know when Logan Paul was like, like telling him to push to two. Logan Paul really wanted him, wanted to push him to four because two, two videos is not hard at all. Mm. Gideon's videos are only eight to. 12 minutes long. And the reason I'm using Gideon is because he's in a similar niche as me. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, you know, I want, I'm comparing the two factors. What I'm doing right now is going to blow me up a, a ton, a ton. Like, and I'm very, I'm a very humble person when it comes to like social media because I don't see clout or, you know, numbers as something that puts my status up. I see it as something that gives me a bigger influence to impact the world and inspire people to like, you know, chase their dreams that this is possible too if they just go for it exactly. and not think about it. Because everyone is scared. And I'm I'm the biggest thing I'm like the biggest question I always ask is what are you scared of? In life, there's risk in whatever you do. And if you are scared of taking the risk to do something that's gonna make you happy or that's gonna make you feel like, wow, I feel like I achieved something, then at that point, you're, you're just going to be stuck in that shell of a world it's laid up on a seashore where the water is all you see coming up, splashing in your face. But instead, you could really be the world. You could own, you know, everything, everyone. In a sense, by what I say, that is not own everyone as in buy everyone. I mean, own everyone as in this is your world and everyone's living in it, mm. you know? And people just can't seem to like realize that that's it's not hard it's not hard it just takes effort it takes you have to be driven motivation does not exist you have to be driven motivation lasts you three days to a week at max you know you have to really have a a goal set and something that you know like if i think about this this is going to keep pushing me you know Mm -hmm. you don't want to be motivated by okay i see one of my friends just blew up all right now i'm hyped if he can do it i can do it oh shoot my video flopped Shoot, I don't know if I can do it. Boom, motivation. You just you had it for five seconds, and now now it's gone, you know. But you know, there's this social media world, bro. It is in here, bro. People are it fucks people up in their head. It really does fuck people up. Me, I don't get messed up by social media. I'm barely even on it. Only times I'm on it is if I'm posting, or you know if I'm replying to people or I'm looking up other YouTubers, you know, marketing strategies. Like I used to, I used to like, I watched a lot of Pally Galloway. I don't know, Paolo, Pally Galloway. I don't know if you know who that is. He's a go to YouTube. 
he, he breaks down other YouTubers, like how they blew up and all that and stuff. So I learned a lot from that. Uh, but also, if you got any more questions, I'm... Yeah, there you go. Now, I was gonna, I was gonna say, um, in regards to the quantity over quality stuff, it's hundred percent true. More so these days because everything's becoming a bit more fast paced. I feel that yeah. perfectionism, like you talked about, it's not really worth spending a month on a video and then having twelve videos max per year. I, I agree with yeah. you. But at the same time, if I spend a month on this video and it is a, an amazing video, a banger video, that people yeah. will just be affected by have a reaction to what's the kind of the trade-off there do you think all right this is the trade-off one we're talking we're, let's let's start here yeah as an influencer you're already playing a high-risk game right you know there's a lot of things that come in tag your emotions mm. you know your dopamine levels because views increase dopamine levels that makes you when you get high views you get you get your dopamine levels increase like oh shoot now you get that little burst you know that little spark but all right, so you know dopamine levels, and and another main factor that social media plays is if you're dealing with if you're dealing with um you're dealing with quality, right? Like you said, you're posting once a month. Yes, you can play the if game. If that video goes right, you spent a whole month on that video. If that video goes right, by the way, I'm talking about you're a small influencer. Like you start with you have like what. You have let's say you have like 500 subscribers mm. and you're posting once a month or once a week if that video goes right we're talking about if oh your dopamine level sparks like oh ah but then if it doesn't now it's this mm. frick i just feel like i wasted all my time mm. i just spent a month on this and then that's what causes people to give up so easily and they just throw the vision away because they're like this vision doesn't mm. exist anymore like i don't want to do this put if how much months is it going to take for me to finally get a hit and that lucky break and then that's when their mind's going to keep thinking and then they're going to stress themselves out even more trying to find what works trying to research other youtubers and copy them and you know um not only copy but change their whole persona and change who they're who they even represent just to get views it's, it's not working their strategy is not working when they could have just started posting if it's not every day, three to four videos a week and get that huge boost, like boom. And the thing is, when you're posting a lot of videos at once, you're not you're not thinking, you're not really thinking, oh, this didn't go big. You're thinking, all right, I got another video tomorrow. It's cool. Let's keep going. Boom, boom, boom. You're creating a farm, right? I got seven. Look, ready? I got seven crops right here. All right, right now, I have I have corn, 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 right? I got all these. I got corn crops. Mm. These are my crops. It's, by the way. I'm in Africa, right? It's only wind. There's not much, not much rain, right? But you know, I'm. Don't forget these seven crops. They're planted in different spots, right? There's in some spots the dirt is good. Some spots the dirt is bad, right? Got you. So these crops aren't going to grow the same, of course. Now I got seven of these spots. I have seven of these. Um, I have seven of these um crops, and they're corn. I got lucky with two of them out of the seven. Because th those two that I planted right there, guess what? They were in the right spot where the dirt was growing, where the um, bugs wanted to go inside and help um, give it nutrients, yada, yada. And boom. Wow. I just, at least I got two out of seven. All right, I got one crop, right? I, I waited three months for that crop. That one crop planted one spot. That crop did nothing. That crop died instantly. Mm -hmm. So I never had a chance to see any other spots because I wasted so much time just seeing if that one crop's going to grow in that one spot. And now, boom, I lost hope. I don't think, now I think anywhere I plant this crop is not going to grow. And I and I just don't want to try to plant anymore because I feel like my time is wasted. And that's what creators do with their videos. Mm. You know, they aren't thinking. They're just trying to, they're trying to put something, an image, a persona on to themselves because they're copying someone else who can post once a week. Like Jideon now, like Jideon, he can post once a week because his fan base is already established. It's big enough to do that. Yeah. But I'm talking about small creators. For, like Jideon could be bigger if he posted more. I'm saying that for a fact. He would be bigger if he posted way more times a week. Um, but for small creators who are trying to be like that, their biggest mistake is posting once a week or posting once a month, you know, because now it's like they keep comparing themselves. Social media is going to compare and act. Instagram grows 
cap on Instagram. You know, they show their beautiful life. They show their, their stories. But after the story goes down, their mom's yelling, yelling at them. Their boyfriend's abusing them. You know, there's always stuff happening. Social media is a whole lie, a yeah. whole scam. Yeah. So at the end of the day, are you going to be that person who makes the excuse of, I want to be a perfectionist and I want quality? Mm. Or are you going to be a person to build up the muscle to be able to make quantity and quality at the same time and be consistent with it, you know? And that's why luck plays a huge part because you planted that crop at the wrong spot in the wrong time and you got unlucky. And Jadion, I that's why I think he got lucky because he planted that crop at the right time every week and some did wrong, some did good, but he got lucky. He could have got lucky sooner, but his chances of luck were you know they were the same as everyone else's but the thing is he didn't give up other people would have you know some people give up quick like that so you know his his game is played differently everyone's game is played differently but if we're talking about the matters of growth me personally i know i'm gonna grow really quick really fast and i'm gonna see a fan base of my own at like like that and Got you, man. social media yeah, social media is it's all it's all a simulation. It's a game ran by someone way bigger than who you think it would be. Yeah, no, I completely back you there, my friend. Well, given that, what kind of motivates you personally, and what will you do once you establish that platform? Um, you know, as a creator or just as an as somebody that has a message to to spread. Um, I can't personally say a lot that I know because I have a lot of knowledge on like. Uh, I would say higher up or like knowledge that most people at my level shouldn't know but there is some things I don't I won't speak on because I know that if I speak on it um, future but the future it would be very dark but let me say this what's really important I think that everyone well what's really important for me that I want to spread for a message I really want to I'm not I'm not saying waking people up but I want people to be aware, really aware, like open their eyes, look at their surroundings, see their lifestyle, see the position they're in, and realize that they are in this world once. We only live once. As what we know, right? We don't know. No one really has proof of, okay, mm. resurrection. You know, that's why there's different beliefs put in place, you know, mm-hmm. if you're a Christian. You know? So what we know right now is we only live once so if you're playing this game of dumb ways to die are you going to be dumb and die not having the life you wanted to have or are you going to try to play it safe and you can still die but guess what you, you die quicker well you can die quicker you can die longer or you can die miserable you know, anything can happen it's risk on risk yeah so i want people my my goal and my dream is to I want like a a fan base that isn't full of like like pussies. Like they're not full of people who care about what people think, who are scared that if they start chasing their dreams, someone in their school is gonna be like, <laughs> look what he's doing, he's a loser. Or, mm-hmm. you know, if they get bullied, they're not scared to fight back. Like if you're gonna get bullied, fight back. Why are you gonna let that person push you on the ground? If you you so look, look, ready? Would tell me this, bro. Okay. If I punch you on the, I like I'm six four, right? I punch you on the face and I push you on the ground, right? You're intimidated by my height, right? And you're scared. You don't want to fight me, so you just let it happen. Then it starts happening every day. Isn't that weird? Because it's like, if you're getting beat up every day, wouldn't it be the same getting beat up fighting back? Because you're still getting beat up regardless. But if you get if you fight back, you know that's a different story. Because mm. now. You know, that's probably going to stop the person from wanting to fight you because they're going to say, oh, shit, this guy is about it. He's going to fight back. If you're getting bullied, don't get bullied. There's no reason for you to. It's all psychological. It's how you, it's how you, you know, receive, how you um, perceive the world. If you see someone coming at you, don't take the hit. Fight back. Protect yourself, you know. And that's what I want people to, I want to really, like, get that in people's heads. There's no reason if you're getting made fun of, make fun of them back. You know, don't let anyone disrespect you as a person. Mm-hmm. And always, always remember 
that you have a gift, a talent. No one is, I want people to really realize this. No one on this earth is like them. You're, you are your own person. Like when you're born, there's no one else born like you, you know, you, that's the thing about humans. It's like, we, you can't replicate that person. You know, you got all these Drakes and these fake Drakes and all that. No matter what, they'll never be Drake. You can't replicate that person yeah. no matter what. So it's like, you're unique in your own way. Don't try to be anyone else. It's what I want to show people, what I want people to really get inside of their hearts to just do what they love and do what they please. And the people that agree with their, you know, their, um, their ways of living will eventually just come and circle into them. And honestly, once I get that, once people start doing what they love is not being scared of the things that you shouldn't be scared of, I think that's when this world's going to start peak evolution. Like, they're going to start, because people are going to start, there's hella talented people out here. People talented enough to be at the top and take over the world. They're just scared because of all the things put in place that, you know, gives them a reason to be scared, mm. you know? Yeah, like some true intro a- shit. I get you. Yeah, exactly. It gives them a reason, but there really is no reason. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess, and I, I want to add to that, that that like you talk about the fear of you know being judged or the fear of it's a it's a crabs in a barrel world right now for the most part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's okay, and if somebody's watching who resonates with that message and takes that and re- like relates to it, it is them. It's okay to feel the emotion of fear, but I feel like it's much better not to align yourself. It's not I am scared. It's I'm feeling this, and then I can release yeah. it and then keep going. Yeah, and like exactly, you're feeling this fear, right? Just don't let it take you over. Mm. That's all it is. Like you, emotions aren't something you can just shut off. This isn't a vampire diaries. You know, the emotions is emotions is just a human thing. But it's how do you control your emotions? You know, whether you're feeling fear, you're feeling scared. You know, you can't stop that. It's just, I mean, you can stop from feeling scared and fear and certain um positions that you're independent of how you live your life. For example, I like I was just like this little scrawny kid, right? Getting bullied by a big kid, mm. right? I'm scared, but I'm feeling fear. But confidence, and I start taking training lessons. I start fighting, and I have confidence that I can win. I don't feel fear anymore. So fear is a thing that you transplant, that you transplant in your head, and you make yourself believe it, it is stoppable. You know that's why like when people get feared have fear to go up to girls, they start going to the gym, they start getting a perm, they start doing all this stuff. And then they don't have, feel fair anymore because they're pulling every girl. Mm. It's all in their head. You're only scared because you're not confident and you're not believing your own abilities or what you can do. So I, I believe fear is a factor of what everyone feels it and the emotion happens. But it is stoppable in a sense of depending on the situation you're in. And how do you reverse that to make it so that fear is nothing but just a motivator? Of, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you had, did you have experiences like that that kind of shaped your belief on that kind of? that mindset that you had to overcome oh honestly my whole life i always had this mindset it was just like i wouldn't take anything from anybody mm. you know because I'm, I'm more of a smaller size right i'm not tall at all so i would get like people would try to come at me and they would come at me but i wouldn't go for it like i was like no fuck no no matter what i would never i would never be a punk or be scared to do anything or if i had to fight someone no, i'll fight them it was never a Oh, I don't want to fight. He's too big, yada yada. Even if I lose, I don't care. At least I fought. You know. Exactly. I'm not. I'm not gonna get beat. I'd rather get beat up and fighting than get beat up and doing this and going up in a little ball. You know. So I, it's just always been my mindset of just like even when it comes to talking. Like I, I used to be um insecure at a point in life. Like when it came to females, and then I realized it's like everybody's insecure bro everybody you can see the baddest human right now she has something she's insecure about all right yeah use literally use that to your advantage every female's insecure so if you know she's insecure then that means if she's insecure <laughs> shit you're the shit then you can you know that 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 proves that she's not all that you know that makes you feel it makes you feel knowing that everyone's insecure makes you know feel that everyone's in the same boat you being scared to talk to this girl is basically it's equal to you being scared to go up to your friend and be like yo what's up exactly. you know everyone has insecurities bro everyone it's not one person in this world is not insecure subconsciously or even just 
you know, consciously. Yeah. So like I, I broke out of that phase of being scared to talk to females and all that. I would uh, now I just do whatever I want. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. And it's liberating, yeah. man, because it, it that that's just the first step, isn't it? Really, because you go through that process and then you go, oh shit, I conquered a fear. What else can I do? How else can yeah. I use that to my advantage? And then it spirals, and then you're using all of that to your advantage, and creating a big snowball that you hope will expand and expand and expand. And so do I. Man. Mm-hmm. I believe it. I believe it. But yeah. Um, I guess my next question for you, my friend, is... Oh, there was a question in the chat before that I... Hang on. He said, um, the cameraman, is it your friend or your worker or both? My friend? It's my friend. Yeah. He, um... And let me say this. He's my friend because I only... I'm only friends with people who have visions for themselves and aren't there to follow others, mm. you know? And his vision for himself is he wants to make music videos. He wants to be his own boss and everything. And he offered to be my cameraman for free and everything because he wants to get better at his craft. You know, not because I'm, I'm not paying him anything, you know, not because of that, not because of, um, he doesn't know what he wants to do in life. So he wants to just, you know, help me out. No, it's because he wants to get better at what he loves. And that's what I like. I, w- I, w- I have, I keep my circle of friends, people who are like that who mm-hmm. don't want to who don't who don't look for something out of it they look the only thing they want out of it is experience for their own for their own like um self-growth for their own yeah exactly self-growth perfect wording Good. so yeah he is my friend cool friend 100 percent. yeah man i'm i kind of relate to a lot of the stuff you say because i'm on the same journey i wouldn't say that i'm as um obsessed with the qu- the, qu- the the quantity of just spamming mm-hmm. videos out but I, and I do really enjoy watching a video that, you know, has a lot of work, a lot of deep thought, a lot of effort put into it. Because uh, it's a lot like, let's take an example. Let's take like a Mr. Beast example, right? Yeah. Like a video, the first one to get out of the red square loses. Something mm-hmm. something along that nature, right? The whole the gratification process for that video is that when you watch it, it's tension building. You're tensioning, tension, tension. But there's little dopamine hits along the way. He's giving people stuff. He's getting their reaction, all that type of stuff. At the end of the video, you find out who the winner is and the video's done, right? You don't really think about it again after that. However, when there's, say, some actual wholesome content, I'm not saying anything about Mr. Beast, but I'm saying when you have yeah. some sort of artistic or creative expression about it, it functions in the exact same way that people listen to music with or people watch their, their favorite movie with. It's the thing that you can rewatch over and over again because the, the things that you place into the video are still true two years, three years, four years, five years, six years down the track. And it's got that replay value. But when you, and that's, that's like what the way I structure my content or the, why, the reason that I do it is I have a very similar mission to you in terms of making people more aware, trying to release these, these feelings of, of people that are like incapacitated. And there's, there's this yeah. one mission that I have really is to not create a following per se, but create like a movement that builds and, and molds around me. And at the end of the day, I don't want people to follow me because because bro, when people view you as like I'm a celebrity figure and all that shit, they pedestalize you. They want to copy you. They want to be you. I don't want that. I don't want people fucking yeah. on my dick all the time. You know what I mean? I want people that yeah. actually can co-create reality with me and create something fucking sick. And I feel like that's yeah. the same type of message that you're putting out as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly it. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to be a person that people look at me and they, they don't look up to me to, they, I want people to look up to me to be themselves, not look up to me to try to be me. Yeah. You know, and Absolutely. that's my, that's my biggest thing. You know, I, I, I think that people just need, need hope and I want to be that representation of hope to some people. hundred percent. And who would you say are some of your like biggest inspirations in terms of content honestly, creation or just in general? That's hard. Uh, honestly, Michael Jackson. Mm. Yeah, he's the only one I can really think of. And Michael Jackson and myself, I really inspire myself every day because I try to I try to break at least one limit every day, mentally or physically. I just try to break past my limits because you know I see this body as like an avatar. You know, there's nothing really like 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 for example just like games are created you get you hurt you lose life force 
okay, you run, you lose energy. You gotta refuel that energy. Yada yada. This I see this body as my avatar. And the only way I'm gonna get the be become the best avatar is if I push beyond my limits and not do what everyone else is doing. Mm. You know, and by that sense, I'm not talking about wake up at six a.m., get up early. Yada yada. I'm talking about actually, like mentally trying to do new things, like trying to push myself where I've never been pushed before. You know, um, I I you know trying to eat only once a week which is very tough it's very tough but humans in the past they didn't eat three times a day and the government is fucking us over right now <laughs> yeah i mean three times a day is why america is the most fattest freaking usa country thing ever because yep. three, three times a day is wild that's just wild completely agree man completely agree yeah fasting has some massive benefits about it like you yeah. get into like your body starts the actual healing process that yeah the inbuilt healing process that it comes with people don't know that people think it's unhealthy to eat like um you know to skip a meal or to skip a whole day of eating and they don't realize yeah. that people have there's some there's some pretty like if you get really into that rabbit hole there's some pretty amazing feats that people have done in terms mm-hmm. of healing with fasting and, and living simply because that like bro back in the day you probably know this but There'll be periods where, bro, I'm blurry. Come on, G. Uh, there'll be periods where, you know, we didn't have food as hunter gatherers, and we had to go without until we found our next meal, and that was kind yeah. of the process or the the thing that is built into our into our monkey brain, if you will. Yeah, mm. and yeah, this the thing is, the more the more electronics and things that benefit us from getting from point A to point B, cooking fast food, getting food faster, yada, yada. Those are all mechanisms to make us way more lazy and way more laid back and make the government and all the rich people at the top more money, you know? Mm. It's it's all it's all a scam. Nothing of it's really, like, nothing of it's real. Like, everyone's just lost. And the reason is people know this. People, like, really do know this. They just don't want to accept it because they like it. They like the lifestyle, you know? Yeah. So... That's what it is. And you can't blame a man. It's like, at the end of the day, you can only change yourself, right? So yeah. if somebody else chooses to live like that, then that's their, that's on them. But, yeah. but the people that don't choose to live like that, those are the people that, in my opinion, get somewhere. You know? yeah. Yeah. But at the end of the day, where is somewhere? Like you said, we're in this avatar thing. It's going to expire at some point. And then is it worth anything at the end of the day? Like, do you apart from the satisfaction that you might have personally gotten or the reach that you might have created, does it make a difference? What's your opinion? Um, say that one more time. So we're going to die at one point, yeah? Mm-hmm. Is the thing, are the goals that you complete during your lifetime, do they matter further than how it made you feel or how it impacted the people around you? Or is that the whole reason that kind of you would get somewhere because like the the thing to me is is like yes i want to have youtube success or success in general but at the end of the day do i really want it do i really ever know what i actually want you know what i mean like what what is motivating me and why do i want this thing because i know we both like both of us know that the financial gain won't make us happy we know that the followers or or that dopamine rush that we will get off you know social media when we first blow up it won't make us it's all transient it's all temporary yeah there's a kind of it's just like a philosophical question but i wanted to know if you had uh, thoughts on it yeah me myself personally i think it's true we don't know when we'll die we don't know we don't know what happens when we die we don't know that if we will die happy you know we don't know we don't know anything about we don't, we, don't know, we don't know anything connected to death, mm. right? That's why humans live life to what they do know. And what they do know is taught by the people who are, you know, kind of clear to the truth that do know. And that gets to a point to where me, I could say I know. When I die, I'll die happy or anything. But I can also say I do know. For me to die isn't something I can imagine. You know, like, I don't think, no, not, not, I don't think, I know that me dying is not something that's going to happen, but I also do know that 
there is something that will happen in 2026 and that's gonna like change a lot a lot in this world and then 2029 is gonna shock the world and interesting are you talking like on the physical plane or are you talking something else? yeah physical physical and mental there's a lot that's gonna happen and people are gonna start figuring out a lot of the things about this world that they didn't even know existed um I don't want to talk on other people's deaths, but you know, X, he was very, very, he was, just, he was smart. He was open. He, he knew a lot. He knew a lot. Mm. And I, I, I think X was one of the people who were really just, he was a genius. Like, you know, mm. tag, tag tattoos and all that stuff may make you think differently, but he was a genius. Me personally, I think my death is, I don't, I don't know where most of them will feel when I'm gonna die. Cause I don't even know if I will die, but I do know that like, like my life is going to be me wanting to push you just me wanting to give people what I said earlier, you know, Got you. That's why when I die, I'm gonna die like that. Or if I die, you know, mm. but yeah, regardless... I had this, I had this really interesting story about how, how, well, I think it's in the documentary. You probably watched it. Um, you haven't or no? Wait, who, which one? About uh, X's documentary. Oh, no, I don't, I haven't watched it. Yeah, it's a good one because it tells, there's one thing, I'm not sure if it's from the documentary or if it's from a YouTube video that I watched, but it, it talked about how he used to really like doing LSD and he was like interfacing with these entities on, while he was high. And apparently mm -hmm. they, that they told him that he was going to come to an untimely demise. Like he was going to like die when he did. And that's how he had the foreknowledge and that's why he started placing or like putting out all these kind of subliminal messages or hinting at his death because he mm -hmm. actually knew. So that, I feel like that was really interesting. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I do. What do you think about drugs? What's your take on drugs? Uh, so any like psychedelics you're talking about? Yeah. Is any drug that, you know, that makes you feel like you're in a different planet? Um, so from my learning right now, I feel like no, like being sober is the best way that you can go forward in life. Mm -hmm. However, there are, if we're going to, if we're going to talk about like the simulation or the game, there are some yeah. substances that would you can, that you would consider like cheat codes, maybe if you right. were like that can access certain, uh, you know, neural pathways or abilities or awarenesses or sensory perceptions that you didn't have access to in your service day. So mm -hmm. sometimes when you do access those things, <coughs> shit happens, you have no way to explain it, you have no logical basis in it, but you've done something. So that's why you have to be very careful, um, in my opinion. Um, and I've dabbled in like, what, what I would say is anything that's not from the ground, you probably should stay away from. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go. Anything like human made? Any powder, you should probably say. Any pill, fuck that shit, you know? Yeah. yeah. That, what about you, bro? Have you had any, like... Because I have videos, if you want to watch... I can, we'll just talk about it, but I have videos detailing, like, maybe, like, an ego death experience or s stuff like that that I've gone through. Um, Have you had yeah. any, like, experiences like that? Mm, I had, had a few experiences um in my life. Like, I never did drugs, but I have experiences of, like... Like, I feel like, I can't say this, like, I, not deja vu, but prediction of the future experiences. Mm. Like, I can, I, I see, I remap, as in I see the future and I remap it, like, recreate it, in a sense. That's, that's like the experience, the, probably the deepest experiences I have, like, you know, it's like, there's multiple universes and, or dimensions, I would say might be multiple of me is you know different dimensions or i would say there is we... yeah and you know in different versions or different forms and i it's like i look at the mistakes i see the mistakes made or the things the, the next accident to, or the next move close to death and i avoid it um a lot of people you know have a different way of growing up i grew up very um very different from a lot of people so a lot of, when i when i say this stuff people don't really understand 
most people won't understand what I'm talking about. And most people would think, oh, this kid's just crazy, you know? Mm. 18 year old talking about predicting the future. Mm. But everyone has a brain and your brain can do crazy things. Your brain is not just a slob of meat that zombies want to fight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it, it's, it's something that has a power to it, you know? And the thing that people don't see is all these movies are just reflections of that. You know, like Lucy, how she can tap into phones and all that stuff. And she has all this power with her brain. It's all just like, it's not no made up stories or anything. It's mm. shit that's like, it's stuff that, it's like teasers, you know? Teasers are what's really happening in this world. And there's people that make up these theories and all of that shit. Um, people make up people make up all these theories, right? And theories are just one step closer to you realizing the truth, you know. And they call them theories because because they don't want people to believe in it, but they want people to think they believe in it. Yeah. You know? So they want people to think that it's real, that it's actually something, even though they don't really think it is because they don't know and you know the saying you don't believe it until you see it mm. you know it's a reason for that you know people are they don't believe shit until they see it and that's what's what that's what's really fucked up about society you don't believe until you see it and then when you see it it's too late <laughs> yeah yeah so. interesting you said people wouldn't understand like the childhood you went through. Do you want to talk about that, or is that off topic? Uh, off. Say it again. Say it again. You said people like you went through a different childhood to a lot of people. Do you want to elaborate on that, or do you think that that's not relevant, or you don't want to talk about it? Yeah, there's no way I can talk about it in the sense that would be um about beauty yeah i can't talk about it but um yeah that's one what about the 2026 stuff in 2029 because people are going to be in the comments saying what the fuck is this guy talking about oh um that's more something to see like that's like not to throw anyone off course but 2026 there was something that will happen and um, me personally me personally I'm not going to be running away from it I'm just going to be there but not there in a sense but 2029 people are going to be mind blown at the comeback of what happens after like during 2029 I, I, I it sounds so like it's like I, I hate being a person that tells you something but i'm not telling you it mm. i hate that mm. you know there's no way for me to um but i can say this when it comes to this world people gotta really see like really look and see because when you look at something just look at it hard and really look at it and then when you look at it think about what are you looking at what what is this? Analyze it. And really think hard. And the close, the more you do that, the closer you get to your own truth and to the, like sh- the truth of reality to the world. Um, Interesting. A lot of a lot of people died with for having the brain I had, like I have. You know, a lot of people died because, bro. I don't know what's wrong with my ear. It's like ringing, but because um, you know. There are things that there are restrictions, you know, in this so-called game that if you pass CIA, um, you know, CIA or okay, game, okay. yeah, this is this is a lot. But I do I do want to say this, man. I like I as much like for interviews, like I like doing interviews in the beginning and stuff but when I, as i go on towards the future like as in as i um like a year from now mm. it's just like i won't be doing any interviews with anybody for a reason a strong reason mm. and 
that's when people are gonna start realizing slowly. But well, well I, I I won't be able to. But I do want to say this too. What are your plans for YouTube? My plans? Uh, mm-hmm. I just like to make. I just like to express myself as, like, the best I can, bro. I like to, yeah. like, kind of turn the things that I may be thinking about or having a conversation with someone that I feel like other people would benefit into not only an idea that you can consume, but also something that you will come back to, something that's presented in a way that's amazing, awesome, people, something that, like, takes your breath away or blows your mind or, you know, like how, how old YouTube used to be. Like, you used to watch videos and you used to be like, damn, that was exciting, satisfying, you know, crazy you'd have a certain reaction to it and that's why it would ha- gain traction and then slowly kind of the mess the, that kind of thing got filtered down into just reaction channels and all this su- superficial type content um so that's that's what i want to do effectively i see mm. that is valid indeed yeah my um my youtube journey is going to evolve but the videos i'm doing now they're very i think they're very entertaining but they're very simple mm. you know i put a lot of work into it and a lot of time but for thought and ideation, my ideation is very simple for these videos, nothing crazy, because mm. what my evolution for YouTube is, is going to be step at a time. I don't want to hop on the platform being the shit, like being the shit as in the fuck, all this is good ass videos, um, posting every day, yada, yada. Like I have so much ideas planned, yep. but I, I like to be on a level field to where it's like homemade. I never want to be professional in my whole YouTube career. Like I don't want to be, like look professional 4k cameras or any of that mm. you know i want always to feel people like can cum- relate you know and that's the best thing you know i don't want to look like i'm doing a movie on freaking amc screen <laughs> yeah, yeah i just want to look yeah amateur is always the best way i think yeah like some casey nice that shit yeah and like mr beast too his he's amateur like like his quality is good, but his quality as in camera quality, his his movement and all like it's not like a TV show. It's more just like a YouTube video. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's the content of a TV show, but it's not like it doesn't give TV show vibes. It does, but it doesn't. It's, it's balanced. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, maybe in terms of like a message for yourself, because at at the end of every interview or just throughout, at one point in every interview that I do, I asked the guest if they were to talk to themselves maybe five years into the future, uh, what would you say in terms of providing yourself with a message or even providing the audience with a message? Um, but also to kind of like, there's the two reactions you're going to have, right? It's going to be like, this kid was, he knew something and he was, he, I should stay true to that. Or I'm glad that I changed. So do you have like a message, I guess, for in, in that kind of vein? Um, I do. It's 2022. Five years is one day, 2027. 11th so, of June, July. All right. All right. My future self, the word I would say is. Remember, remember 2015, that's my future self is what I would say. Remember 2015 and to my audience, never forget that what you just see me do, by the way, it's 2027. Yeah, I got you. you. To that 27 audience. Yep. You guys remember that no matter what happens, I'm still alive and I'm still living. And everything I do is for reasons, and I have a strong vision for the future. And this was necessary for the vision to happen. And you can say I'm a visionary. But I'm more like a future creator, as you could say. And not a creator as a video, but... Mm, no, I get creator. it. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, I love you guys. Don't forget, stay talented. That's it, bro. That's it. 
Bro, you making me feel like you have like some fucking like ESP ability or some shit. What Wait, the... ESP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can see into the like that's the the vibe I'm getting from you. Like you can see, like nobody asked me the date. It's like, like they're just like, oh yeah, five into the future. But like you were like, oh shit, what shoot, what's the date gonna be like? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Any other questions? I don't know, man. Did you want to talk about anything else? I could probably go to the chat and have a look. All right, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, we could talk about... Oh, yeah. What? You could ask me a question pertaining on how to grow if you're a creator. Yeah, so if or there's any creators that. watching in terms of even in the music industry or YouTube or whatever you know kind of art form that they uh, create or they interact with what is your best kind of method for growing getting people to not only see you but also fuck with you resonate with the content continue to be lifelong supporters as opposed to you know 15 minute fame type shit alright so this is mine if you're serious about getting big if you're serious about being something using your talent and converting it into an audience that likes and loves you and sees that your talent is super talented and like everyone in this bro has talent there's people way more talented than all of these other huge celebrities it's just the fact of marketing if you live on this earth and you want to be an influencer and you don't know one segment of marketing you don't know how to market you don't know how to you don't know how to you don't psychologically know how people's brains work when it comes to watching videos or watching be, getting on their phone there is billions of people on their phone every day. Mm. There's no way in the next year of you making content consistently, you shouldn't reach at least 10,000 of those people. And if you don't, that means you haven't taught yourself one bit of marketing at all. And you can learn marketing from marketers because there's a marketing site called YouTube that markets <laughs> marketers talking about how they market literally you can learn everything google this computer these phones you're on your phone on snapchat trying to get the next girl to slide over to your crib when you can be on youtube or WikiHow or um google searching up and researching how people blew up how you can blow up how the basics of how that platform works if you if you don't even know how to if you see someone bake a cake and you didn't even read the directions yourself. You just did. You just seen from what they did and try to replicate it. And you put that cake in the oven and you're like, why the fuck is it like that? And here's it like that. Mm. It's because you don't know the basics. You go on YouTube and you see another creator do something. You just go out and try to do it. And you're like, why the fuck they didn't blow up? It's because you didn't learn the basics. Learn the basics, the simple basics of YouTube, simple basics of TikTok, Instagram. Learn the basics before you try to hop onto something else. Because if you don't learn the basics, then guess what? You're just going to be wasting your time. And either you're going to waste your time or you're going to get fucking lucky. And when you get fucking lucky, that's the worst. Because when you get lucky, that's when when you blow up, you die. Because you don't know how the fuck you got there. So learn the basics. Don't be dumb. And try to just go into something without even knowing one thing about it. You know, that's like going out, surviving 24 hours. No, surviving a whole week in the woods. And you don't even know what berries are good to eat. So you're just getting lucky at that point. You might eat a poisonous berry and die. It's 50-50 mm. chance. Don't be that person. Mm. You learn marketing and put yourself in a position to where you know if I keep going at this, no matter what, I'll be big. That's all it is. Learn. Knowledge is power, and that is that is the powerfulest like phrase ever. Knowledge is power because it is. Your brain is powerful. And the knowledge you can get and receive from your brain, not from your brain, but into your brain, is very powerful too. So use that. Don't be scared and don't be dumb. Very wise, man. Very wise. Well, thank mm -hmm. you so much for for joining and taking the time, my friend. Of course, I appreciate Thanks, it. Right. No, man. It was nice. Yeah, bro. As long as and for anyone watching, as long as you are a creator and you have a vision and you have a message that you want to put out, I'll do an interview with you, man. 